So in August 2021, I took a set of cheap Chinese carbon wheels being these ICANN Aero 50 wheels valued at 670 USD, or that's a thousand bucks Aussie, Intercity expert mechanic Aaron Dobbs to help me do a three-way comparison against the old and new Windspace Hypers, which are circa double the price of the ICANs, depending which version you want. I'll link to that video up there if you want to check it out. Now, during that chat with Aaron, he was quite complimentary to these ICANN Aero 50 millimeter disc wheels. Good quality spokes, seem like good quality nipples. What are the spokes? So you got the CX rays on that. The carbon without scanning it and getting into details. You know, it's nice and lightweight. They settled well. I think we did an initial wheel true on it, little adjustment, but nothing major. And can I just clarify, this video is not sponsored or brought to you by ICANN. In fact, it's sponsored by Mouse and their iPhone Intralock mounting system, but more on that later. And to be honest with you regarding the ICANNs, as an Aussie, I'm a little put off by their postage costs of circa 150 USD, depending on the day, or that's 230 AUD. So I'm not here to promote the ICANNs and I feel there are a lot of cheaper Chinese carbon wheels on the market that do a good job in many ways. But if you were to pimp your cheap Chinese carbon wheel, there's probably one thing you want to do. You want to address the bearings today. You said they're quite, they felt sluggish. They're just a cheap kind of no-name bearing. We were going to look at doing it with a like-for-like -like bearing, a new steel bearing, but like I said to you, let's just go for it. So we're going to put a full ceramic bearing set through it yep. from Kogel. We'll be doing front hub, rear hub, and free hub body bearings. So that is what we're going to go through today. Now the price of upgrading the bearings. At my local bike shop costs circa 500 AUD or that's 320 USD. Now I obviously got a bit of a discount as you can see, but ultimately you don't need to do this through a local bike shop as Aaron's about to show you exactly how to do it. And you don't need to buy Kogel bearings. You might be able to find something that's perhaps cheaper or more cost effective for you. But Aaron says, assuming you purchase through a local bike shop, they should do the install for free or very limited labor costs. Additionally, in terms of the sluggish feeling Aaron was referring to regarding the ICANN wheels, that was in reference to some speed tests I did on a descent where on the same morning, both Windspace Hyper wheels hit 87 kilometer max speeds on the descent and the ICANN's maxed out at 82 kilometers per hour. When I felt like they should have had more to give since the bearing upgrade, I've been back to that same descent on a zero wind day, same run up, same tires and tubes. I get it, maybe my body weight's a little bit different and they are different days. However, I'm no longer getting the feeling that the wheels are being held back and I'm hitting higher max speeds, as you can see, in addition to the wheels feeling generally way better. And after eight months of use, I am no longer getting that notchy feeling that Aaron often refers to. It's feeling rough in your fingers. So you have this notchiness, so you feel it resistance on every kind of movement of the bearing, you'll feel it pulsing. And you spin it up, you'll feel it through the fork leg, you can feel the pulsing. Like, I mean, they turn, they go along, it does its job, but I think that we can get a lot more performance out of them. So this is the one that we showed on the video last time of greasing remember so I didn't do it on the front we did it on the rear so that grease is still there and that bearing as you see the difference there's no rust anyone can do that when you get a new wheel set whatever it is from whatever brand it's worth just popping these off most of them as we said pull off this one's threaded and just greasing the end caps so it doesn't get, allow water to get in as easily free hard body so the grease is still in there, nice and lightweight, no major rusting. Your local bike shop will not have these in stock. So when you do go into a shop, you're gonna have to obviously let them know what type of bearings you require. Obviously this was a no name to me, I didn't know anything about the product. Easy enough that I can pull them apart and inspect what bearings they are. A lot of them have schematics and information, but the cheaper ones you might find it difficult. Yep. So get your local shop to pull them apart and you can normally just read on the bearing a code, which obviously tells you what you need. So in this case, the front hub on this bicycle runs a 6803 bearing so it's a 17 by 26 by 5. This is a ceramic Kogel so this is also categorized as a hybrid it's not a full ceramic which is where people get confused. They have a steel race they run a full ceramic they put a crack. Okay. So jockey wheels you know when everyone spins them up and you get the Instagram photo videos yeah, of them yeah. spinning and blowing on they spin forever that's great they are 100% ceramic but they're under no heavy load so in this case this still runs a steel outer race and it's categorized as a hybrid bearing. So more longevity in that. The majority of bearings for hubs, bottom brackets, etc., will all be like this. They seal them all, so they're obviously all individually wrapped. Pretty high-end bit of product. In this case, you can go super cheap steel bearings, which is kind of what we have. 
We could have gone a slightly better steel bearing, complete steel bearing like a Enduro, or you can go to the next step, ceramics, which is where we are now. And then you can go, you know, there's ceramic speed, there's sea bear, there's lots of other companies that make ceramic bearings. Yep. This one kind of sits nicely in the middle, I think, and it's yep. a good one that most people can work with. So they okay. can get it pretty much anywhere. We are going to punch these bearings out of here. Because we're not using them again, I can just punch them out and get rid of them. So before Aaron gets his hands dirty, I did want to thank today's video sponsor being Mouse and their Intralock system. So many of you may have heard of Quadlock before. It's a iPhone or phone attachment you can put on your bars. And I purchased one of these a couple of years ago, but it didn't really work for me because the attachment, I don't know if you can see it there, doesn't really work for my bikes, which all have aero handlebars. So I used it a couple of times and it's been sitting there gathering dust ever since. So when Mouse reached out to me about their Intralock, system the first thing i said is do you have a good mounting system for aero handlebars now if you go on their website you will find heaps of different attachments that may work for you but the one that worked for me is this one right here not only does the phone case feel far better quality and secure by this magsafe design that goes into these mechanical teeth to secure your phone in place but this attachment means i can now place my phone where my head unit goes mitigating the need to wrap this thing around my aero handlebars making it a lot more secure and visible because it's now out in front of me where my head unit typically goes. So it's far more practical for my needs. If you're interested in checking out Mouse's Intralock system, I'll put a link in the video description below. I actually use a, a Crow Cam lifter. This is actually from a V8 engine. So it's machine down, so it gives me a nice punch. This allows me to access and punch out bearings at an angle. Once you punch them out, because you're you are effectively knocking the bearing, you can damage it, and then we're not gonna use it again. There's lots of different bearing kits. I mean, this is just some of the ones that we use, but again, this is another kind of punch. These do cost a lot of money, some okay. of them cost heaps, and a lot of shops now are starting to get on board with buying the proper products. If you're gonna be spending lots of money on ceramic bearings, you need to make sure that you're pressing them in correctly. Okay. If you go using a good quality drift or something, yep. people used to use sockets. Again, it's not exactly what we want to be doing. Yep. But if you are going to be banging the bearings in, you have a risk of them going in on the piss, yep. and then it becomes obviously it's get this like tight pressure point, yep. and then you're going to ruin the bearings you just invested money in. So okay. realistically, you want to make sure that they're putting them in with a bearing press. Yep. So that's one end cap. So in this case, we can use the axle to punch out the other side of the bearing. So that's one bearing there. So that's the old bearing. One axle. Yep. If I have a ceramic bearing in there and I need to pull it out to service, we have extraction tools to pull the bearings out. Yep. But it's a waste of time now. Yep. As you see, that's your hub shell. Cool. Get your favorite rag. Obviously, excessive dirt. This is just to allow the bearing to slide in a little bit easier. It's a very lightweight grease. I mean, anyone that's in the industry would know that it's a great product. 6803 sleeve, your bearing clicks onto there. So you need something that's a correct kind of tool, right? So I'm gonna put one of those in there. Because you cannot do it all with the axle in one go, we actually have to receive it. So we're gonna press the bearing in, but in this case, so as we go, that's just gonna drive in here, because yep. this will be driving the bearing okay, in yeah. so as I rotate. Yep. Yeah, and that's it, we're in all the way. Okay. We'll do another one. So then, it's absolutely perfectly in the hub bearing. How do you know that? Feel it. Mmm, feels nice. <laughs> this makes logical sense. I put one bearing in. I cannot put the other bearing in. So I put that in. How do I get my axle in? Mmm. Okay, so logically, we have to put, so I've greased that one. Yep. So that goes in. Push that tight, and now that's your axle. Working on that bearing. Yep. Okay. Then we press the other bearing in. Again, you need certain tooling. We need to make sure it sits over the top of the axle because otherwise if you put something flush against the axle, you're not going to push the bearing in. Next bearing. Yeah. So what people can do as well, if you haven't got the exact press, you can also use your end caps. The cap can go on there like that, over the top. Yeah. And then what we do is, as I drive, I mean, again, you need a bearing press, but this is another way that someone can do this at home. Yeah. As they drive this in here, yeah. it actually drive your bearing in using your cap as well. Because that's what you're doing when you're clamping the fork anyway, is that you're preloading those bearings. Yes. You felt this before. I wish we had like smell -o vision or whatever they call it, but yeah. people could feel it. But ridiculously smooth. I mean, compared to what you just had. Yeah. So your cap pops in, buttery smooth. Mm. So that now has two ceramic bearings. How this works with the rear hub, you have a sleeve between the two bearings. So it's very similar to your front hub. But what we have to do is we have to, so as I move the center, yeah. it pops the sleeve across like that. That now allows me to have a stop on the bearing on the other side. 
bearing, sleeve. So that's reasonably tight because they're a deeper bearing, right? Yes. So this hub uses a 15267. So that's the two bearings that are required for the hub body, not the free hub body. Yep. So, so it's essentially the same process as the front wheel. In this case, yes. Where it gets different is going to be the free hub body assembly is going to be different. Free hub body, two free hub body bearings in this case. Yep. Slide your axle out. Yeah, there's often a sleeve between, or there's a washer, or there's yep. a space at ever so slight there, so it gets clearance. Okay. So this can spin independently to the hub body. Now this, I'm actually going to test something with you. Because our bearings actually have a really good seal on them anyway, these are road seals, but they have a good seal. Yep. That's done a lot of cheaper hubs. That big fat seal, yeah. I don't like them because we're trying to get ultimate performance for you. If you're washing your bike a lot, jet washing, washing, whatever, that's going to stop a lot of dirt and debris getting in there. Yeah. Premium free hub bodies would never have this. People can debate, but in my opinion, in your case yes. right now, I'm going to remove this and not run it. That is just a restricting rotation, right. basically. So we're going to get rid of that one because we have seals on the ends of the free hub body. Right. You know not to jet wash your bike and take yep. care of it. We're gonna get rid of that, punch these out of here, yep. put the ceramic bearings in this one. Okay. Soft jewels, which are these, in your vice, yep. or you can use a Delrin or resin or plumber type section where it's not gonna mar or damage anything. Yep. Same with hubs, if you don't wanna whack it on anything, you need something like that, it's not gonna damage the hub. Um, same scenario here, I need to push the inner sleeve across. That then gives me a stop point, is that here? Great. One bearing, one inner sleeve, still one in there. Obviously you can see that. Yep. Word of warning or caution. On some free hub bodies when you punch these out, there is a circlip or a retaining ring that's on the inside. A lot of free hub bodies I've seen where people have tried to do their own stuff at home. And even, I'm gonna say it, some shops have done it where they've tried to whack this inner bearing out. Yep. Because it's normally full of grease or it's dirty, yep. They're trying to punch the bearing out and it destroys itself, yep. Yep. leaves the race because it's had to try and push against that little circlip. Yep. Some of the other hubs we've had, yep. they may well have a circlip. Double check there's nothing in there, no retaining clip. Yep. That one has none, so I can push that bearing straight out. All the way through. And obviously you go equal, 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 equal. That's your open free hub body. And then we'll press the bearings into that. In this case, this is the 6902 bearing. So now what we need to do is create some depth. The reason why we're creating depth is because we're pushing the bearing from here all the way up to the inside wall. Mm -hmm. So we need depth so it doesn't bottom out on the edge of there. So when I drive that in, that's going to all disappear in there. Okay, let's spin that up. So as we turn this, watch here, the bearing is going to press it in. So as you keep going, it's going to go deeper and deeper and it's going to become loose in a minute most probably. No, the inner wall's the same all the way through. So see, it's gone loose now. Yep. It's gone in that middle middle section where there's no there's no wall thickness in there. Next section. Now we're going in and driving it into the deepest section of the free hub. And that's it. I'm just going to pinch. You don't have to go crushing the bearing in. Yep. It's the worst thing you could do. And now your bearing is sat all the way in the bottom. So then what you do is you run grease between the two. You're bored yet, mate? No, I'm getting hot. You turn my fan on. <laughs> Sleeve goes inside between the two bearings. Next bearing. Get that ready to go. Yep. Because we're not going as deep, not a problem. We don't need as much space as up here. Mm -hmm. So we drive that one in. So that's just going to drive in. So it's going to disappear here until it stops. Yep. And make sure that little sleeve is equal in the middle. And that's it. So we use a very light, thin grease. That one there, because it's sitting in inside the free hub body, yep. can be under load. I'm going to put a heavier grease there. You see, it just sits inside of there. Yep. All right. We get rid of the excess. That's where it all comes together. Oh. Somebody does a bit of it. And then we get our end cap, which is already pre-greased. When you put that in the bicycle, it's going to settle the bearings. I tend to give it a little love tap, make sure everything's settled. Ooh, would, that I'll, sounds nice. Probably better than before. It does. You need to still let the bearings settle. So, I, in my opinion, if you're going to go and do data on that stuff, I would yep. go and let them settle, bed them in, let the grease migrate. Um, I'll pinch that up now and make sure these are set up correctly with the torque setting. And that's it. You're done. Thanks for your time. Easy, mate. No problem.